back at it again with this RSX. So in case you guys didn't know, we ended up pulling up the motor yesterday. Uh, the reason for it is we're gonna clean up the engine bay this year. Every winter I try to like do something different to it just to like, you know, distract myself in the winter because all we do is, all I do is eat and then lay down and do something. So this year I started to pull the motor. We're gonna paint the engine bay. We're gonna wire tuck a couple of things here and there. We're not gonna do like extremely, extremely like tucked and shaved and all that. It's nothing crazy. So today I'm gonna try to take out the ABS, take out the power steering line, take out all the heater stuff, remove as much as we can today. Try to maybe power wash it or something to get all this gunk out oil. So let's get started with today. Barely started, already caught myself. Fuck. Just started to. First piece removal. Start. Let's get this going. for the brake fluid to drain completely and then I'm gonna work my way down to the valve get rid of the whole ABS and then keep going see whatever I don't need and eliminate so like any hole that I see that I don't use or I won't be using I'm circling it and then I'll be like I'll be covering that with fiberglass or something like that hole right there um, and so far I'm gonna just keep going like this is my what is this? This is my stock fuel line. And this is EVAP, I think, or something. I'm just gonna eliminate those as well. So let's keep going. Just waiting for this freaking fluid to drain. The fluid has now been drained. I've been working on like the whole ABS lines. Here's a valve. This line goes to the ABS. This line comes from the ABS as well, but it ended up stripping. But since I'm not gonna use this valve again, I'm just gonna get the grinder, cut it here. I already disconnected the two rear lines. And then I don't feel like going over by the Brembo's and disconnecting it. So I'm just gonna get the grinder and cut this brake line here. As well for this one, just cut it here. And that should be able to free up the whole ABS system. So let me get the grinder and cut this off. I don't feel like struggling with shit that I'm not gonna use again. ABS is now out. Dang. What are we gonna do today? Oh, fuck. Tell him. I don't know. Damn. All right, so we pretty much got everything out the engine bay. I got rid of ABS, as you guys seen, all the power steering, blah, blah, blah. Took out the power steering rack right here. Now for this, what I'm just gonna do is probably just like clean this out as much as I can and then just spray it with the same color, like aluminum finish to it, just because it looks like brand new or whatever. But for today, I got the welder. Now, last night, I just kind of went ahead and just cleaned out like around like the paint or all the holes that I want to like completely weld. So like you guys see the majority of these are have been cleaned. That way I can just go ahead and weld it. These 
uh, some some of these like this, these, these, boom, etc. On this side, pretty much did these right here. Since I'm not gonna have the fuse box right here anymore, so took care of those. Um, some of these here, we're also gonna fix this for us. Oh, I've never welded before, so I have a buddy that's kind of like I guess. He somewhat like welded a couple of things here and there. So, I mean, it's not really much to it. You just like fill up these little holes with weld. So it's not like something like special or fancy that we need to do. So pretty sure I'll be fine. I could probably do it myself, but I'm gonna have him come over, kind of help me out do this. Cause he kind of has experience with body work. And so for like these bigger holes, like these, I'm not sure if I'm gonna cover or if I'm going to be able to cover these. I don't know. I did bring some like a sheet of metal it's kind of thick it's not too thick but it's flexible enough so i'm trying to see if i could make that work to kind of cover these holes up it's just like it's easier to because i don't i think these are a little bit too big to just weld shut so we're gonna try to see if we could put a sheet of metal behind it and then weld it and then we're gonna put a little bit of fiberglass and bondo maybe i'm not sure how he wants to do it he has experience with body work he paints cars he Discount up here, or whatever. Fuck you, charge them. This will happen free. Look at this shit. Don't give a fuck. Come, I guess I'll show you guys the Integra. It did get some new wheels, as you guys see, some rotor slips. And then here, the front rotor slip with some slicks on it. We also made this like kind of like a V stack intake to the turbo, get fresh air. Slicks on the other side. Let me go ahead and pop the hood for you guys. I've not freaking popped the hood on like, it's been like at least a month, so I don't know. It's been raining a lot lately, so let's just see. You guys see there's water right there. So. But here it is. Right now, I would start it for you guys, but it has a dead. So what's new to it, I guess, I think last time we didn't have the, the teardrop exit on it. We got this. Once we got the car fired up, we wasted no time and we took it to a fab, fab guy to get our like things made. So it's a three inch exit. I believe this is one and a quarter or one and a half inch pipe. Uh, I don't know what else. New timing, timing belt. So it's the belt bottom man, uh, CP pistons and mainly rods, I believe. I don't really remember. Head is stock, it's a B18 motor, has a Skunk 2 Pro Series intake. Uh, this is a XS power turbo manifold, and that is a 6262 turbo. It is brand new still. Let's see. It's freaking brand new, zero miles on it. Uh, has a tile 44 millimeter wastegate. A 50 mil tile blow off valve, Mishimoto radiator. Um, these are the coolant lines that go to the turbo. Um, this car was automatic at first. We made it into a manual. As you guys see, we had a cut here and there to make it this fit. We got three pedals now. We bled the clutch, brakes work, gas works fine. And we made this little custom bracket with the gauges. So we have our AM, AFR, 
we have our uh, oil pressure and then we have our boost gauge glow shift then we we did wire this to start up the car with the engine start as you guys see we have a little bit of power but i know the battery is dead it will not crank the car up let me see look does nothing so these are useless for now we don't have anything wired but we could use this to uh whatever we want and then we have our honda added it's completely guarded with our optima battery in the rear it's a mess it's a freaking mess at the dyno the only thing we've been fighting with is a boost lick that we had coming from the injectors but i believe i fixed that i have not been able to test it just because the battery is dead and i've just been lazy to even try it so maybe sometime this week i'll charge the battery and test it out and if everything's fine i kind of want to go get it tuned before you know winter hits i want to get a couple of passes done but i mean the is just sitting there it's nothing really much there's no parts to order it does have our boost controller right there it's all set up honestly it's just ready to hit the dyno if, if all boost leaks is fine which the last time i checked it hold it up to at least 10 pounds of boost but i, I want to make sure it holds at least like 12 to 13 pounds of boost because I don't know how much we'll be pushing to get a 500 horsepower. But maybe some, maybe by the end of this month, I'll go get dyno. But, I mean, Tegra's ready to freaking roll. It's just ready to make some people cry, take them a gaffle beast. But, yeah, I mean, Tegra's ready.